chapter four of the second course on the bit badges token standard. Uh, this course will be about the transferability and, and approvals and going further into depth into the on-chain or how it, how the token standard works on-chain. I will preface this by saying that you, if you are just looking for a high level and you want to interact through the site, everything is handled for you. So like you really don't have to worry about a lot of this um, off-chain or on-chain event. So if you feel free to skip this section or um, actually pretty much the rest, the rest of this course will just be more into like the um, in-depth stuff about how it actually works at a low level. So if you are mainly just interested in creating badges and not like learning about how a badge operates from a developer perspective or low level perspective, feel free to skip the rest of this course um, because we'll just be going into the different how the transferability, approvals, the criteria, and permissions work on chain. So, with that being said, let's get into um, how the approvals and transferability works. So, this only applies to on chain approvals because, you know, off chain, there is no approvals or transfers because everything happens off chain. So, um, so there are three levels kind of on chain that I kind of hinted at before. Um, so, there's the collection level, the user incoming level and user outgoing level. So pretty much on the collection level, the collection creator or manager decides what transfers are allowed versus not, what mints are allowed versus not. And then on the user level, if the, um, it's pretty much if the user can allows the transfer on their behalf or to receive on their behalf. So you can kind of just look at it for this chart here. Um, so. All, all transfers must satisfy the collection approvals, um, and then if they must satisfy the user level approvals where necessary. So the collection approvals are a little unique in the sense that they can override the user level approvals. So for example, like if you're minting, you have to override the mint um, approvals because the mint address can't control anything. Um, you can also, like if you want to implement like forceful re uh, revokes or freezes or anything like that, you would also probably want to override the outgoing approvals. So approvals are not escrows. So um, even if you approve, like pretty much you have to have sufficient balances for the approval. Even if it's, um, even if it approves more or approves less, you're only approved for, for what you're approved and you must also have sufficient balances. Um, so this also applies to the fact that if you uh, define an approval and then you know, maybe you use a different approval, the original approval is not unset or it doesn't, it, their approvals are kind of a different entity from balances and you have to, it's your responsibility to manage them as necessary. So the mint address has unlimited balances um, and that's kind of just how all circulating supply can work. And by the way, let me just stop there. If you want to follow along, just go to the docs pages and then go to the transferability page. So um, approvals mainly follow this interface behind the scenes, as you see here. So um, for the, we define who can transfer, who can receive, so to and from, and then who can initiate, who's approved to initiate the transfer. Um, we also define transfer times, what badge IDs, ownership times, and like a unique approval ID for all the, um, like for the approval. And these are, you can kind of think of these as like the six main fields, right? So every approval um, will kind of have these six main fields as kind of like the scope of it and then additional criteria that needs to be met. Um, for the user level approvals, we just kind of remove the to list and from list for outgoing and incoming approvals respectively. Um, yeah, so the, Um, next thing I want to note is that you're only approved for what you're approved for. So if there's any, you know, combination of these six that you are not that like isn't approved, you're it's disapproved by default. So you must be approved to be approved. Um, so if we go down here, like I mentioned, there's um, six main fields. Um, so the from to initiated by transfer times ownership times and badge IDs. Um, the lists or the recipient the address lists are controlled by list IDs um, a lot, such as like all or mint or reserved. And you can also use um, 
the actual Cosmos address for reserving specific lists. But um, I want to note that all of this criteria must match to be approved. So for example, if like all this criteria matches, but you're transferring badge ID 101, which is outside the range, you will not be like that criteria will not match because the badge IDs is not satisfied. Um, So, for example, this is kind of a high-level overview of it, but as you see here, um, on the collection approvals, you might see something like this, like Bob can transfer to Alice initiated by Bob, add um, this transfer time for these badges and these this ownership times, whatever, and it's approved. Um, but, you know, Bob is not approved to transfer badge ID 3 in, in any of these cases because they're not approved. And so when you put it all together, you will see something like this. So like the collection approvals will be a full, fully fledged like array with, you know, here's one approval for this information. We'll get into the approval criteria later. Um, and then this will be the second. In this case, this is what the transferable approval looks like. Pretty much anyone but the mint address can transfer and approve as necessary for, I guess, these badges in this case. Um, and likewise, the as you see, the outgoing approvals are very similar, same interface, minus the from list ID, because you know that's going to be the sender automatically, and the incoming, uh, minus the to list ID, because that'll be the recipients.